everybody, Zach here from Now You Know, and uh, I'm lucky to be here today with Dr. Passi Vanika. He is the CEO and co-founder of Solar Foods, and I'm speaking to him from Finland. Now, uh, the reason I'm so excited to talk to him is because their company appears to make food out of thin air. Dr. Vanika, thank you for being with me. Can you explain how does your company make food out of thin air? One of the background, key backgrounds what we had here is that uh, myself as, as a co-founder and uh, now CTO in Solar Foods, uh, Dr. Juha Pekka Pitkan, who were scientists uh, in, in our National Research Institute. Uh, myself, I was in charge of a single largest renewable energy research program we had in, uh, in our National Research Institute. That corresponds something like NREL in the US. Um, and we had two key findings. One was that electricity is the new primary energy. So if we want to make a carbon neutral future for the energy system, um, electricity is the new primary energy, whether it's nuclear renewables, but you need to electrify transport, heating, cooling, industrial processes instead of burning. And in this kind of future, then you have a, uh, we had another finding, which was that if you leave fossils in the ground, you need coal, uh, leave coal, oil and gas in the ground, uh, you could replace this carbon for materials and fuels, even medicine, by, by capturing carbon dioxide from the air and actually we made fuels from the air as well. But it was a major finding after these two things and it kind of depressing uh, uh, for me to find out that even if we would do all this, install all the technologies that we were researching and, and, and reinvesting a whole energy system, uh, it's not good enough to comply with the Paris Climate Accord or, or what the IPCC is declaring we would need to do or change the things, what, what is basically happening in the Amazon now, now that there seems to be some burns around because uh, about one quarter of the greenhouse gas footprint due human action is due to what we eat and not from the energy sector at all. So with this background, it's quite easy to understand that we thought that you're allowed to have air and electricity and could you turn that for example instead of fuels which is a simple molecule to something very complex like proteins and amino acids and you could do that you have Pekka had a solution for that and a very convenient uh, factory to to produce this is actually a living cell it almost sounds like you just reproduced what people talk about as was the beginning of uh, life on Earth. You know, I learned it in, in school this way that, you know, maybe there was a, a swamp somewhere and, you know, lightning struck and all of a sudden single form life uh, was formed. It sounds like that's what you're doing. Yeah, like the primordial soup. So basically we, we are re reversing time. We are growing a simple form of life, which is completely natural. Uh, isolated from, from samples that we've taken from, uh, from nature. The difference is that now there are technologies how you can grow and harvest this. So historically the man has been able to hunt the animal, you can see it, maybe you can smell it, uh, run after it and, and hunt it down, or you've, you've been able to keep between your fingers uh, seeds or, or pick berries. But if you would have tried to pick single cells uh, from the nature, it just wouldn't work out and you would just d died. Uh, but now we are going there, uh, taking these organisms and growing and harvesting that and most of the diversity of the life on the planet actually is in the small life, microbial and insects, and we're just taking advantage of that. And in addition, uh, what follows is efficiency, because if you think, for example, that you're hunting for rabbits, uh, the rabbits needs to eat grass, then uh, it runs around, it needs to have uh, hair, bones and things like that. But what you need from that, or the man, the caveman would have needed, is actually the flesh. But now we are growing only that part that contains proteins, carbs and fats. And that's just fundamentally more efficient than using plants or animals. Interesting. So. Your solene, what does it contain? It's proteins, but what can it give us nutrition-wise for our body? Like, what's it made up of? It's uh, it's protein as any protein, which means that it's it's a form of life. When you analyze it, you couldn't really see a difference to soy, dried soy powder, or algae powder, which are both very high in protein. So it's 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 the same. So does this mean that you could uh, replace uh, soy powder with solene and make foods that we all eat with it? That's exactly the idea. So we don't assume that people would eat pills uh, and, and using this, this 
powder as such, but instead we see this uh, platform technology uh, a way to deliver a fundamentally more efficient food system on, on in what comes to proteins because we could be uh, a protein ingredient for existing food products so plant-based dairy whether it's it's drinks or yogurts or similar we, we could be a protein there we could be in bread or or in pasta or we could be in plant-based uh, meat alternatives it's quite hot topic now uh, where where the, the big companies seem to use pea protein isolate or soy as as the a source of protein so we we're kind of drop in protein uh, to them and and the future if uh, we would be starting to to produce and scale a cultured meat, growing real meat cells, then when you scale it, you would need quite a lot of amino acids and sugars that the, the cells eat. And we could provide the amino acid cocktail for, for that cultured medium. So right now I read on your website that you're able to make about a kilo of Soline a day. And I, I assume the plan is to start scaling this up. What, um, what are your plans in the near future? How much Soline do you hope to start producing? We're happy to announce that we can go to a, to a next uh, level and start to execute our go-to-market plan, which means that we're going to build something that's about 100 times bigger than what we have, um, which we think um, is, is kind of a go-to-market scale with a reasonable risk uh, and investment. Uh, and uh, with that together, so that's kind of the technical part, uh, and, and the second is, is the novel food approval. So what we are doing now is that we're, we've been searching for an organism that grows well, it grows uh, efficiently, it's good for, for human uh, consumption and, and you can you know get some IP around it. And then we're generating, most importantly, data uh, for the novel food approval. So we need that for the European Union and the FDA US. That data is being generated as we speak. So because of this, we've been saying that our target year is in 2021, so two and two and a half years. Uh, when we could be uh, on on the market, that's exciting. Yeah, it's it's uh, so far, uh, so far, but so close in a way. <laughs> right, right. Um, so you said on the website that um, Soline is is 100 times or two orders of magnitude more environmentally friendly than any animal or plant based alternative. Can you kind of explain that? What? Why is that? Actually, what we've said uh, that was a bit shortcut by 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 a journalist. What we said is that that we're about 100 times better than meat and 10 times better than than plants. But then after that, you start to be so close to zero in your emissions per kilogram that things become very relative. But that's uh, to give give kind of the order of of, of magnitude, and, and we stay uh, stand behind it because we don't use. Uh, fertilizers and fossil fertilizers on, on open land. We don't apply nitrogen-based fertilizers on open land that uh, generate nitrous oxide, life laughing gas, which is very harmful to, uh, uh, to the atmosphere, more harmful than, than carbon dioxide. We don't use irrigation in open land, no pesticides, and the, the efficiency of, of from electricity to calories is so high that the follow-up result or benefit is, is huge in terms of climate impact. So most of the climate impact what we have is, is due to the energy what we use. So we need to be very careful what kind of power it wouldn't make, what, what kind of power we use. It wouldn't make sense to make proteins from carbon dioxide that you just emitted in burning fields. In the past five years, regardless of what has happened in the food sector, uh, solar has become the cheapest source of power in the Sun Belt, and where we live here up in north, uh, wind power is actually the cheapest new capacity. So we're taking advantage of, of this trend. So would you say that Soline is actually carbon negative if you use alternative energy to make it? That's actually a very good point. It, it, it actually can be. In, in the case we assume that we are producing food and replacing something then basically because of the efficiency, you free land. So for people out there who are wondering if they've got you with the water question, because I know a lot of people were uh, talking about that after our show a couple weeks ago, they were saying, well, it takes water to make this, so it, that's not so good. Uh, what do you say to those folks? We don't apply irrigation, so we use only fraction of the water what open land processes, for example, plants and animal need. It's, it's a fraction 
of that. In addition to that, we can recycle that water in our system. We actually, one extreme example is actually the, the project what we have the European Space Agency to develop a version of our technology for the future Mars missions. There you need to recycle everything that you once launched uh, to, to Mars. So that's an ultimate sort of fully uh, recycling system. We are a brewing technology and, and because of the closed process uh, we are very efficient in, in water use and when you actually go for air capture you can also capture water from the air. Uh, we've done that uh, in the past um, in addition to, to carbon dioxide you can milk the air there actually it's an existing technology in the Gulf re region even today so yes I mean I was seeing on your website to get back to the water thing that um, you know beef uses uh, 15,000 liters of water to make a kilo of beef whereas you guys are 10 times more efficient than even soy is at, at making a kilo of, of protein yeah that's because of the irrigation and, uh, and evaporation and, and operating in open land. Now, you just mentioned Mars a second ago. Um, when we get to Mars, we're going to need to eat something. It sounds like this could be a very promising technology for farming on Mars. Yeah, actually, the, the study, what we've done so far, there are a couple of details um, that um, we're especially happy, um, but uh, still keep them to, to ourselves. What I think we've resolved in the past year some, some key issues for, for the recycling concept. A circular system for 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 the mission about 40 liter reactor um, could supply protein for for the whole crew if it's five six astronauts uh, but then you would need additionally of course carbs and fats uh, for for the astronauts we are quite low in in, in fats so that needs to be a uh, result then you could also say that there could be another organism that you grow like this but it's, it's higher in fat then we are left with the problem that uh, food is not only only energy but it's a psychological issue how that could remind you of earth or somehow it, it affects uh, the textures and all that so it's it's still a long way to go but uh, we're trying trying to do our part uh, on on the calorie and, and amino acid side so basically it sounds like at the moment this wouldn't be a 100 percent of your diet that the idea here wouldn't be to replace everything you eat with soline but it could replace a big part of your diet yeah i think we could uh play a reasonable part in the, in the protein star, star, uh, side of the story. But of course, we're not saying that this is silver bullet and you could eat only this. And, uh, and uh, unlike, you know, you could recommend uh, of, uh, having only hamburgers <laughs> five times a day. But if we think kind of return to the climate problem and the trying to pin out the, the key things and where you could do uh, most of impact, I think this is uh, the area. And how about cost? Is this something that um, I'm sure when you're starting anything up, it's way more expensive than it will be when you start to scale. But do you have any idea down the road if the cost will start to be affordable? With our full scale factory, so after a demonstrator, we're, we're going to tell about our factory plans during the autumn, that what is it that we have after after the roadmap, what we are starting now, and after go to market and, 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 and uh, uh, with a small facility, then what, what, the, what is it that you end up with? What is the optimal size of the facility and all that? Actually, it's being pre-engineered. So in, in that scale, uh, the production cost would be around $6 per kilogram on 100% protein basis. Um, it's, it's more than, than, it's higher than soy. Uh, but I think uh, the, the segment, what we are aiming at, kind of the rest of the field after soy we're quite comfortable with that um, and, and and we're quite confident that it, it, it could be uh, accepted on that cost level if we go to the see and that would be in the conditions of Nordics where we are now uh, you know with the labor cost and, and all the taxes and that but if you would go to uh, the cheapest source of electricity and scale that factory, we see a floor cost that is around uh, $2 or so per, per kilogram of 100% of protein. Uh, so then we are roughly there uh, matching soy soon. Uh, um, for, for human consumption so so is electricity um, one of your biggest costs so if you if you look the the, the six dollar case two and a half dollars from that is is uh, the part of electricity okay so it's a big part and then I guess labor would be one of your other big costs 
labor and then, then capital cost. Speaking of labor, are farmers of the future going to look more like this than, than uh, traditional farmers? Yes and no. You could see that, that this area is increasing. There are, if you say, are, are the beyond people, the kind of the new farmers, uh, perhaps so, so or although we go to the to the fundamental ingredient production so that there's a there's a difference i see it increasing um, but then again being realistic with the increasing population i don't see the current agriculture disappear but it would rather be questioned that we might need up to 70 percent more food by end of the century so so making that up from the current piece of land and water what we have on the planet with declining you know, fish catch. That might be questionable. So you need something additional to, to kind of fill that gap. And, and, and there we come to play. Now, uh, people who are watching right now, uh, maybe students, kids are out there watching who are excited about maybe getting into this field. What are some of the things they should be thinking about studying? I mean, it sounds like you're at a cross section between all sorts of sciences, uh, you know, biology and engineering and physics. And, you know, what are some of the valuable skills that they should be thinking about learning? Whatever you feel motivated, even passionate, uh, you feel that, that you're kind of good at and would like to learn more. Uh, and even if you're not good at it, you, ca you can learn just, you know, working harder to, to uh, learn what you, what you think you would need to know. But then make a company, uh, make a startup or, or develop a, a new solution. I would say that today you, in every case, would need friends and possibly friends that are different to you. So they did oh. study something else and, and when you uh, put these disciplines together from the intersections you can find new things and opportunities so for example what uh, I have a background in energy engineering and I was uh, in, in full steam with that but then my our CTO in solar foods a bioprocess engineer so I it what he did is is kind of magic to me uh, and, and 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 then uh, also if you look for for or kind of a um, founding a company it's also something like the investors like that there are complementing skills in the team so maybe in short you know do whatever you you feel is important you're interested in and work harder uh, but you know make friends and uh, appreciate others and and then you can actually when you find a together a common vision then it kind of everyone starts to go to the same direction and magic can happen I love that. That's awesome advice. Speaking of investors, is your company at the point or going to be at the point at any where you're going to need investors, seed round investors, people who are watching right now who are like, this sounds like a great investment. How can they get involved? Yeah, we are raising a round in the, in the coming, uh, let's say, eight to 10 months. We think that we need to have a really good evidence on the applicability of, of the protein uh, and, and the Nobel food approval. To, to really prove our our case, uh, we are generating asset this this at the moment, uh, and once we have it, we, we think that we'll be ready to go with the, with the investors, and they would appreciate it. So with the current uh, funding, uh, we are aiming at to kind of finalize that part, and uh, that's in the, how we are proceeding in the in the roadmap. So, but very soon we're we're open. How can uh, viewers who are interested in this follow you? Uh, can they go to your website? What, what's the best way to follow what you're up to? Yeah, we, we try to be increasingly active in the social media, even YouTube. We know, I know that there will be uh, videos where our people will be featured in even our, our kind of space applications uh, things. Um, so you could follow that and social media in general. Uh, you can go to our, our website and especially there's one thing that when you go there, there will be a pop-up. You can uh, download our, our, some, our material, but also sign up for our newsletter uh, and then you will be updated on our progress. And I promise you there will be a lot of news in the, in the coming months. Oh, cool. We'll put all the links in our show notes down below so that people can follow that. Well, thank you so much for taking time today to talk about everything that's going on at Solar Foods. I know that when I read the story originally, it almost sounded too good to be true. It's really great to speak to the CEO of the company to see that, nope, it's real. You guys are actually doing it. Um, and it sounds like some exciting things are, are in the road for you guys. Yeah, thank you very much for, for having me. 
Thanks so much for watching Now You Know. We work hard to bring you videos about things that we think you'll find useful, but we need to know from you what you want to see, so leave your comments below. Also, don't forget to go over to our Patreon page, where for as little as a buck a month, you can watch our Patreon bonus story every week on Tesla Time News. Thanks again. We'll see you soon.